I just thought about something funny, man. Somebody put on Facebook the other day. They said, <laughs> they said there's no way T2 can be a thug because you don't become the number one player in the nation and be a thug at the same time. And then, and then Max said, I knew Nick. I know Nick Webster personally. <laughs> So right, listen, man. We back. Um, X, I'm D. Caneville, Footballville. Y'all make sure y'all go follow the Twitter, Caneville 305, and Instagram. Tell them follow Instagram, boo. Instagram, Caneville 305. Same, same, same handle. All right. Um, like, share. Sad day in Cane Nation, man. We lost number one linebacker in the nation. He lived approximately five miles away from <laughs> from from University of Miami. Um, T2 has committed and it wasn't to the University of Miami. Um what are, what are we losing, man? Like like We're losing the ball up. Yeah. Losing um a head hunter. Right. Somebody who's let me back up a little bit. I once asked Blake Baker on the show, hey, what is this? We get defensive ends and we convert them to linebackers and he said there aren't many true linebackers in the recruiting process. Um I don't know. Did he say South Florida? Did he yeah, just he say said, high school football? South, football? South Florida. He said South Florida. Aren't too many true linebackers. So converting uh, Sam Brooks to middle linebacker is a normal thing. But we had our chance to get the number one middle linebacker in the nation who was right here, down the street. In your backyard. Teammates going to the University of Miami. Um, and they didn't land him. Uh, but talk to me, man. Well, what do you, what 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 did we just miss out instantly, on? It instantly make the linebacker room a lot better. Right. Um, a winner. He's a baller. Um, aggressiveness. He brings that aggressiveness. Um, I kind of say he, he, you know, he brings that Nate Webster aggressiveness. Right. To the linebacker room, where uh -huh. you just know Nate going to go make a play, so you know T two going to go make a play. Um, right. Speed, instinct. So um, right. Hood, you know, he's the hood, bring the hood back. I mean, hood. Miami had a lot going for him, bro. They had a lot on their side. They had James Williams, who played with him as a kid. He had Khalil Brantley, got all these kids pulling for him, played with him at Khalil Northwestern. Him. Yeah, Khalil, yeah, Big Romano, Baby, Big right Baby. there. Yeah. Big Baby, little brother, Lawrence Seymour, another Miami commit on his yeah. team. Um, and when we talked to AJ the other day, his officer coordinator at um, Central, he said T2 just wanted, was trying to make the perfect decision, and he just felt like. He tell me it ain't no perfect ain't decision. No perfect decision. Wherever you go, you get there and you make the perfect situation. You make the perfect situation. Um, so, who, who who do you compare T two? T two is who to you? He reminds you of who in high school? I, I you know the, the first name came to my head was Nate Webster. Nate Webster. Why? Because of their character. They both they both character uh, is is almost similar. You know what I'm saying? Um, Nate was Nate was Mr. All World at the West. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> T2 was Mr. Just, All World at the West. I just thought about something funny, man. Somebody put on Facebook the other day. They said, <laughs> they said there's no way T2 can be a thug because you don't become the number one player in the nation and be a thug at the same time. And then, and then Max said, I knew Nate. I know Nate Webster personally. <laughs> And I was like, Aaron Hernandez, I raised you one. <laughs> like, so that ain't got nothing to do with it. We yeah, seen no, a, yeah. a full-fledged killer become yeah. <laughs> top player in the nation. So that ain't got nothing to do with it. I think T2 remind me of Matthew Thomas. Um, I think I think it remind me of Matthew Thomas. Um, a lot of y'all, I don't know if you remember Matthew Thomas. He played at Florida State. Um, I don't know. He may be on somebody's roster in the league. I know he got a chance. Yeah. Because he got the size. He had, he had all of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's the slimness, quickness to the ball. Um, go check it out. I got a football video, Matthew Thomas video, the way football video used to do things. I put it out there. Just him lurking around the defense and, and slashing through the defense, getting to the quarterback. I think he reminded me of Matthew. Matthew Thomas was a lot taller, right? He was like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, yeah, four. yeah, yeah. Maybe a lot taller. Um, I think it was Nate. Nate was like maybe five, eleven, six feet. At I remember the most. watching Nate grab the quarterback, say height, and grab the quarterback before he even get out from under center. Like just shoot the gap. My cousin Gary Streeter, man, was on the only dudes I seen do that before, man. He would shoot the gap, 
he shoot the gap and grab the quarterback before he even get a chance to, to, to back out and go into what he's about to go into. Um, shout out to Nate, man. Nate's in, he's in jail now, right? He's locked up, man. I think, well, yeah. he might still be locked up, but he's supposed to be getting out. Soon, yeah. So. Okay, cool. But yeah, but yeah, man. So then, summer day, man. Um, summer day, Miami. We lose something that we really needed. True linebacker, the hood. Like he's hood, hood. You know what I'm saying? Not, and not a bad way, because he's not a bad kid. But he's hood. He's from the hood. You know what right. I'm saying? So, um, but you're getting that. He's a winner too. Yeah. Every everywhere he's went, played from little league on to high school, he's been a winner. Right. You know, so you're getting that that winning culture. Um, you're getting a good player, a damn good player. Like yeah. I said, probably yeah. the best linebacker coming out of Miami since Willie Williams. I mean, so so, so the T2 recruitment has been um, confusing to a lot of people. And I try to explain to the, to, to the fans that these are kids, bro. Like when you were 17, what decisions did you have to make? Were you making a decision that was going to determine the rest of your life? Uh, you probably could barely figure out what shoes you wanted to get for the first yeah. day of school. <laughs> and these decisions are... Are tough on some of the kids. Um, a lot of pressure. Lots of pressure. Man. Somebody start calling you the number one linebacker in the nation. Are you gonna walk around school with your shirt off, thinking you the king? Like, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of responsibility given to these kids. And T2 had a rough one. He had an issue at Northwestern. Um, he left Northwestern, went to Chaminade. Um, he wasn't a fit for Chaminade. He ended up at Central. With Central, Central can deal with these the, the kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When they when they go. Cause man, let's be real. Listen, man, these, these kids. A lot of these kids come from environments, the tough environments, and as they start getting older, they start dealing with is they have having issues because um, what they've seen as kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, Central is used to dealing with kids like that. They're used to dealing with the personality, the off the field stuff to get a kid prepared to play, to get him to on the field. Um, there's a lot of the inner city schools, uh, Northwestern, Edison. They, 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 they're, they're built to deal with yeah. a lot of those kids. Um, but, man, I'm for the set up in sugarcoat stuff, man. Like, uh, like some of these kids come from bad like bad environments. Their dad and their mom do the best they can to raise them. But then their dad and their mom was handed nothing from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So some of these kids are coming from environments that some of you guys... Y'all can't, y'all can't relate. Yeah, they don't relate to. Y'all can't relate. So, so, so the trauma that it causes sometimes it starts taking its toll, and you looking at him, and you looking at him like, why he can't act right? Well, I mean, what he came from, I mean, what what, what he came from was was struggle. <laughs> and when it starts playing out in real life, y'all don't want to deal with it. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think I think it's like a turn on and turn off situation. Right. Man. Some of these kids, they live this every day, you know what I'm saying? And this is, uh, y'all get on Twitter or social media, and y'all talk bad about, oh, kid got in trouble, this and this. And um, don't really know the full details of it, but you know, y'all first instinct is, right. oh, this kid is a thug, or he's there. Right, right, yeah. And, because, um, yeah. Because your life was cut and dry. Yeah. You, you know you, all you had to do was choose a college, yeah. and then... Then choose a firm that your dad wanted you to work for. Yeah, yeah, Man, yeah, yeah. these kids, uh, these kids aren't coming from that. Nah, these kids coming from real life, man. Yeah. What they say we was trying to get T2 on the show. T2 poster came to the show weeks ago yeah, and yeah, talked yeah. to Central, and Central was like, nah, man, we, we, we'll we get you um, we, we'll get you Yule and Amari, but T2 dealing with real life. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, T2 yeah, yeah. got real life things going on. You know what I'm saying? I get a call from T2 dad months ago, and his dad was like, listen, man, when he committed to Tennessee, and his dad was like, listen, man, he, he, he right now, he don't really deserve everything he's getting. We got to get him back on track, basically. We got to get him back on track. Um, right now, he tripping, basically. So, this is like real life stuff that goes on, and then a lot of time, all the fans see is football stuff. Yeah, all they know, all they know is football, 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 football. Right. Football. But sometimes it's a lot more than that. You know, um, football be they that be their escape. Right. For, for the player, but you know, at the end of the day, you got to go back to. That same situation. Yeah, go back to the situation. Same situation. So. Right, 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 right. So it's a lot, man. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot on these kids. Like I said, I can't imagine being the number one basketball player in the nation coming out. Somebody telling you the number one basketball player in the nation. How would you have dealt with that? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I dealt with my. Even, I wasn't the number one player in the nation, but I dealt with what I was, and I was like, yeah, for real. <laughs> like, it, it, oh, as yeah. a kid, I'm sure. So you he, feel you feel like, oh, okay, I'm kind of. I'm, Untouchable, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, Y'all right, telling right. me I'm this and this and that, okay? Right. So he never set the bench in his life. You know, he's, he's, his dad started playing him 
up, up. You know what I'm saying? So he's always been a starter. Wherever he's at, he's been. Right. And when we say playing up, like he never played with his age. With his age. He always played above his age. He always stayed age. above his uh, age above group. His age. Throughout youth football, he was always the youngest kid on the team or close to the youngest kid on the team. James Williams told James the same thing. Yeah, James Williams, James Williams just was big. Yeah, so just, you couldn't tell. Bigger than you know everybody, yeah. So. The transfer portal looking like Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> the transfer portal looking like Amazon. Man. <laughs> the transfer oh. portal looking crazy, crazy. Crazy, crazy. Couple, couple, couple crib kids in the transfer portal. Yeah. Oh. But all right, man. Um, back at this recruiting thing. Uh, let's ask some of the sad day footballville. Oh,